we have way of X number two. We're jumping into our X books. Holy shit. This issue was insane. Do the thing. Oh, you want me to do the thing? Do, do the thing. Like this thing? I don't know because I can't hear it. Uh oh. Uh, actually, it's going through my. Damn it, dude. I, I have not been ready for this show at all. Uh. I've got my audio jacked up, so let me switch this really quick. But this is Nate's pick of the week. This is my pick of the week. Do you want me to just talk about it while you try to... Yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, So I have a lot to say about this book. I'll try to keep it not like 30 minutes long. But um, where to begin? (laughs) There's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. We pick up with uh, um, Nightcrawler running into an astral plane projection of David Haller or Legion. Yeah. and basically, Legion is asking for help, saying, "Hey, I uh, I'm not <laughs> I'm my body is currently having issues, and I need some help. And you're gonna have to help me, or it could like blow up the whole world, mm-hmm. and that would be bad." Um, so, um, Nightcrawler basically jumps to Krakoa to gather a small little team that is gonna help him on this mission with David Haller. Uh, before they go, there's this really interesting uh, piece that won't come back up until the very end of the book, but uh, Legion essentially goes into Nightcrawler's head real quick and is digging around in there and notices evidence that someone has been already been inside of Nightcrawler's consciousness, digging around in there, mm. doing something. We don't know what. Um, he pulls out like this poisonous coin. So he goes, he goes into his head, and it's like a big, like super classic Nightcrawler, like piratey themed thing. And on the crest of the ship is a coin. He pulls it off and hands it to him. And says, "Uh oh, someone's been in here already." Um, my favorite scenes, or my favorite scene, I guess, from this whole thing though, is this little glimpse into everyday life on Krakoa that we get, which I find absolutely hilarious like i think Cy spurrier is a really funny writer in general um and i think this just sort of um exemplifies that we go to the what is what do they call it the green lagoon um, uh it's the bar right it's the bar yeah. yeah 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 whatever the main bar is they go there dazzler's putting on a show fabian cortez and dr nemesis are sitting at the bar uh cortez is sulking because of his recent uh firing from um sword <laughs> and which honestly i didn't think we'd ever see him again to be 100 percent, i didn't think we'd see him again well here we go um and dr nemesis basically says like oh like you <laughs> he said you must be pretty bad when you're sitting around listening to this oral leprosy on purpose <laughs> and i was like damn they gotta do dazzler like that rough and then he goes he's like what you don't enjoy dazzler <laughs> I have to read this word for word and let me see if I can actually get through it because it's kind of a tongue twister, but it's hilarious. He says, well, let me see. Do I enjoy being stabbed repeatedly in my parietal lobe by the species, by the specious word farts of weaponized human disco ball? No, no, I do not. I don't know, man. Like that, that that's just super clever to me. And that's totally shows Spurrier's like sense of humor, um, like British mm-hmm. sense of humor. Um, but essentially, you know, we're we're get, we we get almost like a, a two page. I'm sure this is setting up something later, but also like a little glimpse in the life because uh, we also get a conversation between Pixie. Um, I don't remember this girl's name because I'm not familiar with her, but Pixie and another girl that was from the first issue. Um, and she's basically asking Pixie to ask Mercury to go with them to the Hellfire Gala because she wants her to be her date, but she doesn't want it to be awkward and. Um, then, you know, at one point Nightcrawler runs into Lost, which is the character where you're introduced into the first time. <laughs> Jane says destroyed her whole life. I yeah. know, man. I've never seen Dazzler be burned like that before. It was harsh. Um, and Nightcrawler, you know, sees Lost, the, the gangly woman that, uh, makes everyone barf, uh, <laughs> and is like, uh, yeah, sorry. Like, I really want to talk to you, but I can't right now. Um, and so he grabs Pixie, grabs Dr. Nemesis, and they're off to the coordinates that David Holler has left in Nightcrawler's head. 
Which is to a destroyed Orcus facility. Um, inside this facility, they find uh, David Holler's brain in a jar. Literally, that's it. That's all that's left of his body. It's just his brain in a jar. Um, and I think we're. I think in this issue, we are really getting some setup for some big stuff. Um, turns out that Orcus has been using um, so. Legion has like multiple personalities and each of those personalities can manifest powers. And when he is removed from the initial psyche, he can't control those different psyches. Thus the powers go crazy. And so what Orcas is trying to do is harness the powers of David psyche to attack Krakoa. Mm -hmm. um, we even get a glimpse into David's uh, current psyche, Nightcrawler and Pixie jump in there and literally there's like a scene of a guy like chewing on innards like on uh <sighs> intestines and stuff and it's it's actually i wasn't expecting it to get that intense but it did and i enjoyed it um but the overall premise here is that they're they're trying to weaponize legion um and they have got to find a way to you know stop this from happening and they essentially come to the conclusion that like yeah this i mean we just get we we have to kill brain right like this mm -hmm. they're using this right now and they find proof that um essentially what they've been doing is running multiple simulations on how to destroy Krakoa, and that the longer they keep this going the closer they're going to get to that goal uh, and that they might have already started a plan to get it there Right, so uh, from my understanding of that, it's basically they're running the simulation to show that in their in them finding or achieving um, immortality, right? They have nothing to gain nor lose, so they just end up driving themselves crazy. At least that's what was happening in the simulation. That is, that's exactly what was happening in the simulation. So uh, um, he calls it. Um the derangement of the infinite. He basically says when everything's possible and nothing matters, meaning, meaning, meaninglessness begets alienation. Desire leads to sadism and self-destruction before you know it. Your neighbor's eating your face <laughs> while you're too busy boring anthrax in the water supply and you don't even care. Damn. Um, and so, you know, they've got to, we got to stop this. We got to stop this problem. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy the part where, uh, Dr. Nemesis is like, oh, is, is this, are we killing someone? Like, I got this crazy gun, and but Nightcrawler takes the gun and is like, now y'all leave. And he's he's about to, you know, do what Nightcrawler does. He's about to fall into his his pattern and, and say, you know, his, I don't remember what that prayer is called, but the, the, you know, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And then he stops and is like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> it just puts a bullet in David Holler's brain in a jar. And then that's yeah. it. I like that a lot because it, it just it was so out of character and you could see him like fighting his you know like you're saying like his typical nightcrawler shit mm -hmm. but then he realized like in order to in order to you know save legion but also move forward in, in his agenda which he doesn't really know what it is yet he had to do it well we get we get a um we get a word uh, page after that which is another excerpt from this uh pretend bible essentially i don't know you know they because it's called the book of some blank it's like blanked out and stuff but this is essentially like the mutant bible that he has written in some type of future or whatever right um and this literally what he says he says you know i killed him by doing so i permitted his rebirth that i believe was my first true step toward the way an ugly act, an act that broke every piece of thoughtless conditioning that I had ever accumulated, but which catalyzed an act of creation whose value I cannot now understate. Uh, he basically says exactly what you just said. Like, it's like every thoughtless condition, everything I just did because I thought I had to do it. Like, he literally started saying that prayer and then realized, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing here is literally good. Like, not killing him would be like the sin here. Right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I'm very, very interested in this type of progression from Nightcrawler as a independent character, um, and then also just the whole uh, hearts and minds aspect of mm -hmm. Krakoa as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
we end the book basically with David Holler's resurrection, which is quite um, interesting. It like it almost like reverberates through Krakoa. You can see a lot of people. Um, Nightcrawler has some thought bubbles, basically talking about like how how still and quiet it was, and how you could feel. You could almost like feel his rebirth, even though people are being rebirthed all the time. Right. It was just like this extra knowing that was going on. It basically like everyone stopped in Krakoa mm-hmm. for his resurrection. And they bring this husk back, and at first he's just laying there, and you, he, he has this face where you just like, it, there's nothing there. It's just the husk. Yeah. And Professor X turns away and says, like, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not going to use Cerebro to, uh, to do this. Like, I'm not, I can't do it. <laughs> and then literally the next panel, David Holler stands up and says, like, yeah, don't worry about it. Did it myself. I'll take care of it. Yeah. Don't need you to do that for me. <laughs> so he, uh, <laughs> he literally somehow forces his own consciousness back into a husk of his body. I... Yeah, dude, it's so weird. This this is the one point where Spire Sp- Sp- goes comics. <laughs> now, be, uh, now, now be quiet and let me finish. <laughs> like comics. Um, I also like how he makes fun of Professor X's helmet and calls it his astronaut helmet. Um, and I find it really interesting too. We're getting a little bit more glimpse of what Magneto is going to be doing um, at Hellfire Gala. He approaches him and says, "You know, oh, I've uh, yeah, I've got an Omega level mutant uh, project that's underway. That's world shaking." And David Holler's like, "Nah, I don't trust you. Go away." And Professor X tries to jump in there. And he's like, oh, "Nope, don't trust, don't trust you, you either." Either so <laughs> shut up. He's like, everybody here's got secrets and shadows except this guy. And he puts his arm around Nightcrawler. He's like, this guy is the only one that's genuinely, like, curious and trying to figure out what's going on and is, um, uh, you know, actually, like, concerned with the hearts and minds of Krakoa, which is what I said earlier. And and cause that's what he says right at the end. Um, he's like, so I, I'm going to chill with him, which I think is pretty cool if we're actually going to get legion as a reoccurring uh character on this book i very much assumed that he would just kind of show up for a few issues and then be gone um so it looks like he's here to play yeah looks like he is here um and then him and uh uh, legion and nightcrawler kind of walk off and they're just like okay well so like what are we gonna do like what's going on uh and nightcrawler says you know do you have any idea who the patchwork man is and Big, big spoilers. spoiler alert! <laughs> Massive spoilers. <laughs> big spoiler alert for literally all of Hickman Run X Men. Just so you know, David Holler goes, uh, "Yeah, I know exactly who it is. It's Onslaught, and he's here." Shit! And that's a big whoa, whoa. Massive, like, like it. I, dude, that's gonna be. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yes, it's. I think this is going to have a really long-standing ramifications, and I'm I'm curious now because you never really know with comics. I'm curious if this is a thing that Cy Spurrier brought on and said, "Hey, I want to find a way to introduce Onslaught," and then Hickman's like, "Yeah, cool," or if this was really good, like planned to be here the whole time. I say the whole time, probably not from the very beginning, but I almost wonder if this is a Jonathan Hickman thing or if this is a Cy Spurrier thing because I feel like. I feel like the ramifications of this are going to be larger than just the way of X book. Yeah, no, I think this is a Hickman thing, and I think Hickman probably has had this in his mind. I mean, dude, he he's a long haul writer, right? Like he yeah. he writes for the long haul, so I I would not be surprised if it was Hickman, and this is going to be one of many things that are going to just completely because you got to think about it. Like in Hoxpox, we saw so many different lives through Moira, and we we're like, oh my god, how can you top that? Like literally. Yeah. How can you top the eleventh life, right? Like, yeah, or no, ninth life. Um, Whichever. That one was the craziest one. I mean, people died. Apocalypse ended up becoming the hero. Like all kinds of cra- crazy, crazy shit. So like, mm-hmm. you got to think that the tenth life is going to be balls to the wall, and nothing says that more than onslaught, and probably a hell of a lot more characters that we just haven't even thought of yet that are coming. Um, and you know, like. Comic Book Herald probably has a list <laughs> of all the characters that he's... I mean, he talks about it all the time. Yeah. So, um, did you talk about the, like, astral gem 
that Legion pulled out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the very beginning, where he basically says, like, yeah, that someone's been in his mind and someone's that's like evidence of someone probing his mind before. Right. Sorry, I was trying to work the audio, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I brought that up. I think, you know, and Harold brought this up as well. You know, that's that's a big thing. Like, how many other people have had their minds, you know, has have something inserted into them as well? Is this a, you know, is it Professor X doing this when they get resurrected? Does he put a little thing inside their brain to make them, you know, just go with Krakoa? Or, you know, is mm -hmm. it somebody else? It's It feels like it's Professor X. Um, yes. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, this issue was packed full of stuff. Um, and I'm right there with Harold. This is definitely my one of my top three X books right now. By the Just, way, we keep we keep saying Harold over and over again. We're talking about comic book Harold. He's got a YouTube page. I went ahead and threw the link in there. There you go. Uh, if you are into X books, you definitely need to be checking this. That is a out. must if you're reading X books because this he guy is it down. the current authority. Yeah, he like, he breaks sure. down. He breaks down comic uh, X books. I mean, he's got reading orders. He's got back issues that you need to read if you really want to dive into it. I mean, I do not not watch one of his videos before our show just so I can really understand. <laughs> I actually what the this hell's... one. I need to watch this one. It's good. really good. It, this one is really good. He, he really touches it, and he he goes, he dives into the whole like what Magneto's doing too. That's where I got my oh whole, okay. like, yeah. He 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 breaks it down so. Definitely recommend that to anybody that is not watching Comic Book Harold's videos. If you're reading X books, check him out. He is kicking ass over there. Mm -hmm. um, but that is way of X number two. I don't know if I fixed it, but uh, Jaden, let me know if you hear this. Uh, this is Nate's pick of the week. 